welcome back to my sewing room where we make things practical. Today I am using my stripology ruler. I have a new grandbaby that's going to be here very soon and I want to whip up a quilt right quick. I'm going to use my stripology ruler. I found a really cool pattern I love. It's going to be quick and easy. The blocks are like this. Oops. Maybe I'll show you a better view down here. A little bit easier. Okay, these are the blocks. What I love about this pattern is you sew four blocks together. So this is half a block. And these right here kind of make a circle through the middle of the block. I love it. It's fast. We're going to use the stripology ruler. I'm going to show you how I made these. And we're going to go through one block, then I'm going to finish finish it up and I'll bring you along for the rest. Stripology ruler. Isn't this cute? Oh my gosh, I just love this fabric. I believe I'm going to match this one with this wording that says you are cherished. I have got them all pressed. And then I have pink and I'm going to do the pink one with gingham. So cute. Okay. You're going to be looking at it at a side angle kind of. Like, I'm going to do four at a time. This goes on your fabric. Bring this down till your black line is right on the bottom of your fabric and the zero line is right there. And the first thing we're going to do is find our zero. Again, make sure your zero line is on there. It just doesn't... Okay. There we go. I can't see well. I'm going to go right into my zero. I don't think that cut. It's hard to get used to the cutting. This is a small one also. So, unfortunately, that is not going to cut through the top of my fabric, so I need to move this up. Do yourself a favor if you get this. Get the big one. I wish I would have gotten the big one. It was $50 more than I was willing to part with at the moment, but it is, it'd be worth it to get the big one. So, I cut off my zero line, and I believe it's three and a half, but let me check the pattern. Okay, so the pattern walks through with you to cut at zero and three and a half. Okay, here's my three and a half line. I need to make sure all this stays lined up here. I honestly did not feel like that cut through. Make sure you hold on to it so it doesn't move. And then it also says to cut it 10. I'm just going to move this down. Use the side and I'm going to cut off that edge. So we want everything to stay completely straight. And this fabric of course has the the edging that isn't straight. <laughs> Alright, now that that is done, I knew that didn't cut through. Line this up at the edge of your fabric and zero it out. I'm going to try to use this one. And then we cut again at three and a half. So 
So keeping that lined up with my edge. Keep your fingers out of the way from the blade. You don't want to hold here. You want to hold just on the side. I know it sounds obvious, but I have already found myself with my hand over it. Okay, so now we have those pieces. And we have these pieces. Okay, so we need to cut this at nine and a half. And this one doesn't go up to nine and a half. I am going to put it on here though and zero everything out on the side. And then I'm just going to follow my cutting board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half. And I'm just going to line up my edge here. Again, do yourself a favor and get the biggest ruler, the extra large. Alright, now this is the fun part. I'm going to separate these, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to sew this to this. and then add this to the bottom and then we move on to the next one which is directional pay attention to the directions the directional fabric we're going to sew this to this and this to the bottom so we have mirror images and then the same thing with this that's the yellow one directional so make sure that my fabric is this way my wording and then my wording to the bottom of that one And then we have this one left. Make sure my wording, because it's directional. This one to this one. Quarter inch seam, of course. I'm just going to press it toward the outside because it's easier. And then I'm going to add this one. To the bottom here. Just kind of finger press and open. And then I'll give it a good press before I cut them. But there's number one, and then we're going to do a mirror image. I am so in love with this pattern and this fabric, are you kidding me? This would be cute with any fabric, this pattern. I might make this again. Be careful with your fabric. I just sew that inside out, of course. I gotta pick these out and redo it.
Okay, so here you can see I've got mirror images. I guess this way would be better. Okay, I'm going to do the other ones. Yes, you can chain piece these, and when I get started doing the bulk of them, that is what I will do. But for right now, I'm showing you I'm cutting in between. Okay, I'm going to take these to my ironing board, I'm going to press them, and then I'll meet you back at the cutting board for the second part of this. Okay, so here I've got them pressed. You can press them open, you can press them to one side, it doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. Um, this is where the super fun of it happens. You're going to take your square. i got to use a bigger ruler because that one isn't big enough to go from corner to corner. That is why, again, the extra large ruler is the way to go. It must be turned this way to cut it. You can cut two at a time. I just did one. I should have done two at a time. Okay, so cut that. Here is the other mirror image of that, which I should have cut them at the same time. Okay, so here's my two sides. Then I take the other two mirror images and I put those together. So this one will mostly be writing block and this one will mostly be the O block. And then we'll sew these together, these two blocks. You can cut a stack of four, you can cut a stack of two, however you want to do it, whatever you're comfortable with. match them up. I'm no expert at this per se. This is my very first stripology quilt. And this is just not lining up. Okay, so then we remove the top one here. We have the bottom one, we sew these two together. And we sew these two together. Make sure you match your corners up. Okay, and then when we open it up, we can see we have all the little points through the middle.
I just think this is so cute. I just want to give it a little finger press before I press it with the iron. All right, here are all the blocks sewn together, and I really cannot get a good shot of this for you here. I was trying to spread it out in this small sewing area, but I really couldn't do it. So I'm going to put a picture in here of the finished quilt after I quilted it. The next project I'm starting here is a table runner and I'm showing you the pattern that I'm using. I'm using that pumpkin block, or I'm doing that pumpkin block out of Farm Girl Vintage by Lori Holt. I love this book. And I really wanted to spotlight that fabric that you can see under the book there with the cinnamon sticks and apples. That is the fabric designed by my daughter-in-law and that's the sample fabric she gave me so I am going to make a fall table runner out of it. So I'm going to cut all the pieces out according to the instructions there. And I'm just looking for other fall looking fabrics that may coordinate with that fabric. Alright, I have settled on this orange fabric. It has flowers and tiny little brown, brown polka dots on it. You can't really see them. Um, but I love this fabric. It's so cute. I cannot remember where I got the fabric and, or I can't and I can't remember the name of the line the designer none of that So um, I can't give you any of that information, but it's so cute Alright, so here we are. I have all the pieces cut out and I've got my little little alphabetties labeling them. If you don't have alphabetties, you should get some. They're awesome. And I don't have to worry about using up a bunch of stickers. I do have the Lori Holt stickers that I used in the beginning and those were good, but you know, you got to keep purchasing stickers, the little alphabetties. I got those from the fabric shop there. I'm showing you the little alphabetties. I keep them in that old mason jar old bar it's an old ball jar but I'm showing you the things that you'll need the rulers the labels your pieces of fabric that you cut out um, assuming you have that farm girl vintage book because I can't give you that pattern that's Lori's I'm showing you the first step that I'm going to do and that is sewing one piece to the corner, a small piece to the corner of the next, like snowballing the corner. I did try to lighten this footage up for you. It is dark and I'm trying to sew. And I'm having to do a voiceover because a, I was listening to podcasts. B, Robert comes in the room and he's talking to the dogs really loudly. So, anyway, I'm just starting to put that block together. I was going to do it earlier in the day when I showed you, and then um, I didn't get a chance to sew until the night. So I've got right sides of fabric laid together, and I'm going to sew corner to corner so that I can flip the one side over 
and then the corner will be the different color. I think this might be the stem part I'm working on, I guess I can't remember. Okay, moving on to the second step, and I am doing more snowballing of corners. Again, I still think this is the stem because it's a green piece. And I am just trimming a quarter inch away. Okay, with that other little piece out of the way, I'm on to the next step. More little green pieces. I'm working on the top of the pumpkin right now.
And on to the next page. Exciting stuff. So I'm just putting apart or putting together that top of that pumpkin still. There was a lot of little tiny pieces for that part, but it was really kind of a fun project to do. Okay, and the curly Q vine part is done out of all those little tiny pieces. <laughs> and then later on, I kind of whack some of it off anyway, trying to square up. <laughs> all that hard work, darn it. Okay, and then on to the next step, which is either part of the stem or the leaf. We'll see. I can't remember. Mind you, this was like at the end of last summer. Uh, August, September, maybe. Obviously, I'm still wearing shorts there, and here it's winter. It's, um, well, spring. We are now in March 2024, currently. I told you if I found this SD card, I would put this video up for you, and um, I found the card. I actually started cleaning my sewing room here. I'm going to rearrange it this weekend. Fun spring project. Spring cleaning and rearranging. I need a more functional room here. And then I'll do a room tour, because this is a small room, but I still manage to function in it. I just think it could be better. So, leaf part. I'm doing the leaf right now. And reading the directions. I look confused. I really wasn't, I promise. It comes together, man.
Okay, I was wrong. This is the leaf part, so I'm just snowballing opposite corners <clears throat> to make that big leaf, and that'll go on one entire side, the right side. All right, and then this little piece of brown gingham is going to be the stem of the pumpkin. All right, fast forward to the next day, I put those... Um, what do you call them? Rows. I put those rows together and now I'm going to sew all the rows together including the top row of the stem you saw me make, the stem and leaf. I didn't show making the pumpkin or the inside of the pumpkin. I'm not sure why. Probably because my camera died. It happens. So now I'm just sewing. I'm going to sew those rows together and turn it into the block. sewing on some background to complete the block. I did pick out some yellow leaf background and I'm cutting the sides there just to even it out a little bit. I don't like, I like to trim them before I sew them together to make sure everything's completely even. Even if I screw up somehow and my block is a little bit smaller, I still would rather it be even and look good than, than um, be uneven. I've, that goes on both sides. I think I'm just trying to figure out which would be easier to sew on first. But you put, I put background around the block. I don't think I added it to the top, but I did add it to the sides and the bottom.
and there it is, my finished pumpkin block. Now the brown in the middle of the pumpkin is the same exact fabric as the orange, it's just brown. Okay, so I have decided to cut this down to five or six inches, so I cut a six inch square and I kind of centered my apple the way I wanted it. I have a bunch of these squares left over, so I cut all of these into three inch squares. I'm gonna make some half square triangles to go along the outside of this. And then I'm gonna do some fussy cuts. If you don't know what fussy cuts is we're gonna go over it so I'm just gonna take these guys um, and I'm gonna put right sides together with these and I am going to sew right down the middle okay for some quick half square triangles which is going to take, of course, some of the design out of this fabric because they're bigger, but that's okay. We are going to fix it when we decide to do some fussy cuts. Some of these need ironed better. Okay, so all these are together. I'm going to take them over to the sewing machine, and I'm going to sew down the middle of all of them. So let's go do that. I really need to clean this. It is a mess. When you're sewing these, you can put your ruler on here and draw with a light pencil line from corner to corner to follow. I don't even do that anymore. I did in the beginning, but um, I just put the, the measurement tape. I forget what it's called, but it has the measurements. You can get them on Amazon, and I believe I have them in my link. Um, it's called Honey Sew. So this tape you put with the red line directly in line with your needle. That way, and then you put it straight. That way when you're sewing, you can just put your corner on your red line. And... Keep your corner directly on your red line, and that means you're going to sew it completely straight. And we're going to go ahead and chain piece these. I don't know how many I need since I'm not following a pattern, I'm just kind of doing it. Make sure you put a little piece of material in there, or fabric, if you are. Okay, these are done. You need to cut them apart. If you don't have one of these block cutters, they sell these big purple diamond looking ones that aren't pretty to look at, but they, they do the job. I love mine here. I got this at a shop hop several years ago. Makes quick work of cutting them apart, or you can use scissors. Up to you. Now we're going to trim these. Let me get a cutter. I have everything stacked on top of this little cutter. It's handy to have, but boy do I stack everything on it. Okay, I am going to put my sewed line on my quarter inch line there, and I am going to cut Those aren't really big enough to save, so I'm not going to try. Again, lining my quarter inch up on my seam, and I'm cutting. Oops, almost tossed that. The wrong part. Yeah, I'm holding it at a weird angle. I know. It's because I'm sitting down. I'm not usually sitting down when I cut. I usually am standing at my table. Okay, let's go press these open. Okay, we're going to do them this way. 
And we want to set our seams first. I still stand here and kind of finger press first just so I don't stretch my half square triangle and get it all wonky. Okay, now that we got these done, we're going to put these to the side here and we're going to take our clapper. If you can see, oops. Okay, so I've just steamed them and I'm going to put Okay, so we iron them. I'm going to give them a little bit of steam. Put the clapper on it and let it sit there for a minute and cool off. That way they will be perfectly straight. Sorry, you're moving around. And then I'm going to move my clapper over here to hold those guys down. Now that these are all cooled off, look how perfectly straight they are. Using the clapper really is a game changer. Oh gosh, I have extra fabric everywhere. Extra projects. Oh my goodness. I need to sort those out and put them in bins. Okay, so you know, now I probably should trim these down some so that they'll fit. I was trying to get three. I'm probably only going to get two. So what I think I'm going to do is sew them like this. Okay, so that works for this, but then I need an extra piece on the sides, and I got one, one short here. This is what I'm going to do. I need to make one more of these, which is no big deal. And then I have several of these that I can just put right on the corners. So that's what I shall do. Corner pieces, corner pieces. Okay, I am going to make one more of these. I just need to find another apple square and then we're going to do some fussy cuts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is sew the two points, I'm going to sew the points together first on top. <laughs> So I press these sides out, those sides will go in. The next row. Okay, so the next row will be my apple and these guys. So I want to sew these together first. And then again, just making sure my seams match up as best as it can. Okay, so that was that side. Let's do the next. Okay, 
So here I've got my sections sewed together and as you can see this block was a tiny bit longer than this section so I'm just going to adjust it. So when there's no, you're not following directions and you're kind of doing your own thing, everything will work out fine so long as you do the same thing to each block that you do. Try to keep the same measurements and just trim. Okay, now that I've got this guy even, this goes on top, this goes down here. I'm going to sew these together. Which makes it like a giant square. I guess I could have just left it whole and turned it on its... set it on point. So you can also do that. <laughs> Alright, next block coming up. We're going to do this leaf block. Super easy. I believe I've cut everything out already and I'm going to make the leaf out of that same apple fabric. And I'm showing you that I got that from Autumnville. It's a thimble berry pattern. I made that entire quilt. It's so cute. I just haven't put it together yet. I've got the quilt top done. I just haven't put it together. It's a king size. Okay, so you probably guessed more half square triangles. This leaf pattern is mainly made up of half square triangles. And I, of course I don't have you in view of any of it. The blocks are finished, so I'm showing you the finished blocks. And the, this table runner wasn't so much showing you about making the blocks as it was showing you the fabric and kind of my ideas of putting it together and um, how to put together a table runner just by making blocks you like and without having to do binding. This is the little bit of that fabric I have left over and I'm going to pick out a few of the pictures on there and I'm going to cut them out perfectly around them so that we can sew them right onto the table runner as applique. Cutting out a design perfectly around the edges is what is called or referred to as fussy cutting or a fussy cut. Okay, <clears throat> I have cut all these out. This is so pretty. She has the perfect fabric for fussy cut projects. Sorry for all the voiceover. I am listening to Harry Potter Halloween. <laughs> I didn't want to get in trouble for that on my video. So, Anyway, 
I have fussy cutted I fussy cut these pieces out and what we're gonna do this is pretty much applique these are just so cute now I'm gonna have to get more fabric of hers because this would be so cute on an apron as an applique so I don't know if I want to put all of these together before doing this or just kind of splash them here and there trying to decide where I want them but I did want to go over fussy cutting at some point with you because it's so fun it's just a type of applique now on the back of these you can put stabilizer you can put fusible web or you can just put glue since I already cut them out like this I'm just going to use glue I use this glue stick but if you've got the little glue you can dot whatever you want to use and when you're cutting these out if you want to use an exacto knife you could totally do that I'm much more comfortable using my Kai scissors how do I want this right here maybe and then I'm just going to put my I'll put my spice there. My star anise. I'm glad she put star anise on here. Star anise is by far the prettiest spice. I didn't say it tastes the best, but I like it in small doses. They're just so cute. Okay, I'm just going to sew them on here. I think this one, I love it. I'm going to use that for an apron. And I'll put these small ones on here. So I'm just going to take it to my sewing machine. And I'm just going to do a regular stitch around it to secure it. That's it. Okay, so here I have sewed, I've sewn the top together. My quilt blocks. And I'm going to go ahead and put a border around this with this same fabric if you can tell this is leaf fabric but I have a bunch of it so I'm also going to use it for the back I'm going to put some insole bright in the middle thereby making this practical for the table you know oven to table and you can just set your casserole dishes on it um, but it's just kind of a cute fun table runner for fall featuring my daughter-in-law's fabric I will put again put the links for this fabric in the description box below for you and then this leaf pattern is from Autumnville I will link that pattern in the description box for you as well and I will link this book in the description box for you also that way you can purchase that if you like for the patterns okay so I'm not going to bring you along for putting it together and quilting it because you've already seen all that process before and I have so many things I gotta get cracking on but I will show you the finished product I gotta put it aside for now because my new grandbaby is gonna be here here's my next set of fabric I need to get this quilt top started because that baby isn't gonna wait so I'm gonna clean up and get started on my next project I'm gonna show you how I make this quilt block but I'll show you one and then I'm gonna make the rest Okay, so here is my table runner, and what I have is the batting behind the top. And I'm going to take the bottom, and I'm going to flip it over so right sides are together. And I'm going to sew around the entire outside, leaving an opening so that I can turn it right side out. So all the way around, I'm going to do a quarter inch. This way, when we pull it right side out, then we can go around top stitch and we can quilt it after that and we don't have to have a binding. 
this is the way to do it without a binding. If you've got a two-point turner or the purple thing, whatever you want to use to poke out your corners with, being careful not to poke through your stitching. Okay, I'm going to go run an iron over this real quick and then I'm going to come back and top stitch around, sealing up the opening, and then I'll quilt it. Okay, here is the finished table runner. And I just did some simple stitch in the ditch just to get it done and um, I didn't do any fancy quilting on it just stitch in the ditch around and then I just did a top stitch around the edges so this is a super simple way to make a table runner doing it bindless so there it is it's pretty simple pretty easy I just wanted to show you those different techniques how to do a bindless table runner you can do quilts the same way uh, you can do bindless baby quilts super quick to whip up and you can still quilt them as you normally would want to or however you wanted to do it but this is a pretty quick way to get stuff done and that's all for this one okay so I just wanted to show you those two projects that I finished up last year and I just hadn't had a chance to have been so busy Anyway, friends, thank you so much for hanging in there with me, and I will see you in the next video. I have a really fun project coming up for you.